Now that we have world bounds and we can move left and right from our input system, what about firing a rocket? Well, let's go add uh, this rocket fire uh, system. So to fire a rocket, we're gonna need some information and we have some options on where we store this information. And now we're also gonna have to go make a prefab. So let's go create uh, the player missile first. <clears throat> so I'm gonna create another empty game object and we're gonna call this the player missile because the aliens will also have a missile and we'll get to that. This is uh, Space Invaders after all. Make sure we reset our transformation. Let's add the convert to entity. And before we go any further, I'm gonna create a new folder. We'll call this prefabs. And we're just gonna make this a prefab. So even though this is a game object, and then I'm actually gonna delete the player missile from here. So this is a prefab now. So not only can game objects in the scene have a convert to entity, but prefabs can also be a convert to entity and, uh, and be efficient <clears throat> in that manner. And we're gonna have to go add some data to this now. Well, the first thing we're gonna add is, um, just like the player can move based off of speed, because we have this speed data attribute or, or component, uh, well, a missile has to move over time. So a missile has speed as well. So why don't we give a missile speed? And we know a missile can't move left or right. A player missile only moves up and an alien missile only moves down. So we can make this simple and let's just give it a positive Y because we go Y positive up. Our world up is, is one, uh, which means a negative would be down. So we're gonna have a speed data. Uh, we need some more data though. This will allow the missile to move in the system based off of that speed. Uh, but uh, what uh, uh, other information do we need to make this work? Well, let's go add some more components. Let's add a missile data component, if I can spell missile. And this is in uh, component data. And this is a authoring component like we've been doing so many times. Uh, and uh, before I actually go further, let's also add an enum. And we're gonna call this game side. Is that in game side enum? And this is gonna have uh, just two pieces of data. We're gonna say player, or alien. I just wanna know what side uh, is this entity on? Is it a, what team is it on, right? So we can actually call it team, game side, where let's just call it team. I like team better. So we have a player team and we have the alien team. So we come back to uh, our missile data. We need to know what, what, what team this is on. So we'll call it team. And then we need a float three of an offset. Let's add our rest of this data here. So we have a missile data, right? And we're gonna say that this is the player team. And from an offset, uh, we'll keep this, let's go negative uh, 0 0.5 for an offset. And that's gonna, it'll make sense here in a moment when I add this, open this prefab, sorry. I wanna add a new quad, because let's get the graphic in here called GFX graphic. Let's make sure everything is reset, good. And then for the graphic, we have a material, right? We have a missile material that we can drag in here. Uh, if we go to scene, we should be able to see that. So there's our graphic. Uh, it's a, it, the sizing is not right. I need to adjust our size so that it looks like a missile. And if we zoom in, right, it's not squished anymore. It's the right uh, size for it. Uh, before I go further, I need to also remind you guys on the materials, since we're using batch rendering and we're using the hybrid system, it's important to make sure that in any of your materials that you enable GPU instancing. If you know you're going to have a lot, potentially a lot of these spawned at the same time or rendering at the same time, make sure GPU instancing is turned on on all of our materials. You can see that it is enabled uh, where it needs to be enabled. Uh, here and here, right? We enable it where it needs to be. 
So just keep that in mind. Let's go and uh, see how can we spawn this now. So we have a missile. We have a uh, player missile. It's a prefab. Uh, when we have our fire button, if we come to our apply input system, when the fire button is down, I want to fire a rocket. Right? So what does that mean to, uh, to fire a rocket? Well, uh, right now the system doesn't know what a rocket is, doesn't know what a missile is, doesn't know what any of that information is. So let's go add a new component so we can kind of define what some of that is. Let's add an ammo, we call it ammo data, like rocket data, missile data. Uh, let's actually call it rocket, that's fine. Rocket or missile data. All right, we already have missile data, sorry. This is ammo data. So the missile data defines what a missile is, its components of a missile. Ammo data defines something that can fire a missile, like the what's its ammo. Uh, so for this, we want to add a, a component data, a generate authoring. Done this a lot of times. This is where things get interesting. Let's call this the prefab. So you can notice here that I'm creating a structure, a component data, and the item I'm adding to it is an entity itself. You can have entities, you can have entities uh, as a element of a component, and essentially those can, they can be pre, they don't have to be prefabs, they can be a prefab, you can copy them, just like a game object you can instantiate. We can do the same thing with entities. Uh, it could also just be a reference to an entity in the system somewhere. Uh, but for our use case, I'm going to use it as a uh, prefab. I also want a float as a fire rate. And a float of an accumulator. This is going to make sense in a moment. But essentially, what's the rate of fire? I don't want to be able to fire every time I hit the fire command. Because uh, that means the faster you hit the fire command, the more rockets you can spawn. Instead, I want to say I want to be able to fire a rocket every one second at most, right? We want to have a uh, a fire rate. And we want to go implement that as, as its own system. So if we want to fire a rocket, well, well we, need a, we need a system that allows us to fire a rocket. So let's go implement a fire rocket system. So new system, fire rocket system. This is a component system. Everything we're doing, all of these systems we're creating are component systems. And now that I've written a few of these, I can let you know uh, a component system runs on the game thread. So I'm sure you've been, re if you've read up on ECS and the job system and, and, you know, everything runs in the background or on threads and it's complicated, everything we're writing right now is a component system. A component system does not run in the background. A component system runs on the main thread, just like a mono behavior update does. It's no different in, in how that runs for the most part. Uh, so you have to be very mindful of that. Everything we're doing here is on the UI thread. So the more logic we add here, the more logic we're adding every frame of our game to go execute on. Uh, but my suggestion is do not look at job component systems until you need to look at performance. Implement everything as a component system as basic and as simple as possible Get your logic in place, get it running, and then go see what systems are running slow and then optimize those systems as need be. Not everything has to run in the background. Not everything has to be a job system. Not everything has to be as optimized as, as humanly possible. Get the game running, get your logic in place first. It's much easier to develop the logic in a component system than it is in a job system. Uh, which we will look at. We will do some job systems uh, just so you can see how those work. Uh, but it's easier to use a component system because you have full access to everything when you need it instead of having to figure out your, your data flow. Okay, so we have a fire rocket system. Uh, I want to make sure that this is going to be an update after type of apply input system. 
So we want to make sure that this is running after our apply input system because the inputs are what's going to actually uh, uh, tell us to go fire a rocket. And uh, I want to make sure that as soon as we get a request to fire a rocket, we actually can fire a rocket. Bringing that up, we have the concept of a request to fire a rocket. So how am I going to fire a rocket? We could be processing the input system. We could uh, use this input data and take this information and not clear our buffer. That's a little more complex. What I like to do is uh, in the ECS system is actually use a messaging pattern. So how does a messaging pattern look like in, in, in any component system? Well, let's create a component called a fire request. A fire request is in I component data. It is not in authoring. I'm not going to add the generate authoring to this. This is not an authoring component. This is going to be a component we dynamically add to an entity at code time, but it is a component. It's going to have an entity <clears throat> requester. Who is requester? Who, what entity requested that they uh, fire a rocket? And at what position was the rocket supposed to be fired from? So it's that simple, right? We want to know where we're firing a rocket and, uh, and who uh, requested that we fire a rocket. But this is a request. This is not us actually firing the rocket. So now that we have this fire rocket system, assuming that these requests exist, let's actually go and um, create that request when the fire button is down, right? So when we apply our input system, we can now uh, implement the fire rocket request. So uh, how are we gonna do a request? So how do you do a messaging system in, in ECS? It's a, it's a little more complex than just adding a component onto an entity because you have to remember that uh, an entity can only have one instance of a component type at a time. So I can't just have a uh, an entity that has multiple fire request components, because what if there are five aliens and they are also requesting to fire a rocket with and the player at the same time? That's six requests in the system to fire. Uh, I could use a buffer, just like we have our input data. This could be, it could be a dynamic buffer of requests to fire. That is one option, and then keep that on a singleton. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's valid, it works. What I'm actually going to do here is because entities are very cheap performance-wise in the system, I'm actually going to create an entity for every message. A fire request is a message, right? It's a messaging system. I'm going to create a request to fire, uh, but I'm going to create a new entity and then assign that fire request to it so that another system later on can pick up those fire request entities and process them, and then we'll delete those entities. So we're going to churn through entities, but these are not uh, uh, game objects. Uh, there's not allocations that are really happening here. Uh, so we're reusing entities. It's fine. But that's how we're going to use a messaging system. So how does that happen in a component system here? Well, let's create an entity, which we'll call request. And then instead of just saying there are two ways you can do this in a component system, you can say from the entity manager, uh, create entity, right? If I was not in this for each, if I was outside of this for each Lambda, I could do this and this would be fine. This works. However, because I'm in a for each, I'm iterating through entities, I cannot create an entity directly. This creates the ent entity immediately in the system and then that invalidates our enumeration and we would get an error. So instead of creating an entity immediately, what we can then what we can do instead is say as a post update command, let's create an entity. So this will not create the entity right away. Instead, this basically um, creates a command to create an entity once our update has run. So this is a buffer of commands. It's an entity command buffer. And we can add a bunch of commands that will modify entities or modify the entity manager. And they will just be queued up. And as soon as on update has run, all of these post update commands will then get executed. So I'm going to put a request 
to create an entity. And then I want to uh, add another command in here to add a component to this new entity that I just created for request. And it's gonna be a new fire request. And this has some data. This has a requester. And the requester is this entity, right? Because we're applying our inputs. We're going through uh, all the players that have input data, speed data, translation. This is the entity that has those. This is the player. In this case, the player is requesting. And then the position that, uh, we, should, that we should spawn the rocket at will be our current position value. And we want to add uh, kind of just an offset here. And I'm going to hard code this offset. It's okay for what we're trying to accomplish today. Uh, you might want to add this into like the, a player data uh, instead of this being a player tag. Maybe this has some player data. Maybe you have a new component in here. Uh, for us, we're just going to hard code this. And what I'm doing here is to say, I don't want the rocket to spawn in the center of the player. I want the rocket to spawn slightly above the player uh, so they can fire, just from a spawn position. I want it to spawn just in front of the player because that's where it should. You probably would want to add a component that is a rocket spawn uh, position and add that to your player. And then you would spawn rockets based off the position. And then in the editor, you could adjust it. Here, we're gonna make we're gonna kind of shortcut, make it make it to cheap, and just always spawn half a world unit in front of the player ship. So this is a request. So we're creating a new entity, and then we're adding a fire request to this entity. We're not actually firing, right? We're actually not firing or doing anything like that. Every time this fire uh, uh, input is true, we're going to create this request. So if I hold the space bar down, the fire key down, it will create a very large amount of these fire requests. Let's actually go do that right now. And let's see what happens. So if we get over here to the entity debugger, we can see that we only have four objects in our game and we can move. So now what happens if I hold down the space key? You see our entity count is just growing and I stop holding the space key down and we have entities. If we look at what these entities are, what are they? Well, it's a fire request. It's got our requester, which is the player, and it has a position that it should fire from it. And it's all gonna be duplicated data because our positional data hasn't changed, right? We're just holding the space key down. So let's stop playing here. So we have these requests, these are messages. It's a message system. We've created these entities and these entities have these components of data that I'm trying to pass to another system, which is this fire rocket system. And the fire rocket system is what's gonna use uh, our, uh, our request data. We want to do an entities for each again. We're gonna be using this entities for each in these systems a lot. This is essentially how you query for and then execute logic on your objects, entities that have a set of components. That's what makes an object in an entity system. So we have our entity. We then want a ref to our fire request. So I'm not looping through players. I'm not looping through alien entities. I'm not doing any of that. I am looping through. I want to get all of the message entities, all of those temporary entities that have this fire request on it. That's all we're looking for, right? Because this is our messaging system for fire requests. And when we are in this for each, I can get the requester. And then from that requester, we can check if it has some data. A Whoever is firing this rocket should have ammo data. It needs to know what to fire. Uh, so we can say has component. Now we can use the entity manager directly here because I'm not going to add or modify an entity. I want to see does it have a component of ammo data. And we pass in our entity. So if this has uh, ammo data, let's go grab the ammo data now. Oops. Okay, 
So we want to get component data of ammo data. Again, from. Who's this from? And now let's go see, are we able to fire if ammo.accumulator is equal to or greater than ammo.fire rate? Remember how we created the fire rate and that accumulator variable. Uh, this is how we're going to do our fire rate system. We're going to say, has the accumulator, is it, has it accumulated enough time to reach our fire rate or not? If it has, if it has, we know we can fire. So let's decrement our uh, accumulator by our fire rate. Uh, let's make sure that we can reduce our accumulator so that we can start ticking time up again so we can fire again. So fire rate set to one second. This is how we can fire every one second and keep track of that time. Uh, and now let's actually go ahead and spawn our rocket. Again, because we are in a for each, I can't just create an entity or instantiate an entity and add components to it. We have to use this command buffer stream, but that's okay. It's real simple. We can instantiate. And remember, I'm, uh, this is going to have a prefab. Our ammo has our prefab in here. That's our missile. That's our player missile that we want to essentially uh, prefab, instantiate up, and then which will spawn it. So we create a copy of that. So Rocket's a copy of that prefab. And now we need to go set some components on it, some component data on it, on the Rocket. Let's update its translation, because a Rocket will have a translation. Every, every entity, essentially, that is a converted object, a prefab or, or in the scene, has translation, rotation, and scale. Uh, so let's let component, and the value is our request.position. This is where we should spawn the Rocket. Uh, now that we have updated our accumulator, so remember how I'm calling entity manager dot get component data. I told you this earlier as a reminder, ammo data is a structure components are structs. So this ammo is a copy and now we are modifying the copy of ammo. We are changing the accumulator if we're supposed to fire. So we need to make sure that this data gets written back to the entity that owns this ammo data. Uh, so what we need to make sure we're doing is saying this dot entity manager dot set component data from an ammo. This will write the ammo data back to uh, the entity that owns it. Otherwise, this accumulator would actually never decrease. It's only decreasing the copy of ammo data. We need to make sure that that gets copied back to its master location. Uh, the last thing we're going to do uh, for this fire request, no matter what, no matter what, uh, if it has the component or if it doesn't have the component, uh, what we want to do is say this dot post update commands. We want to destroy the request. Remember, this is a messaging system. We created the message when we apply uh, our inputs, it, which creates an entity and adds a fire request to it. This is the fire rocket system which is uh, uh, implementing that message request, the fire request. So this is saying that I've processed the message. Let's make sure we destroy the message now. Otherwise, we'll just reprocess the message in the next update loop. And we don't want to do that. We want to process the message only once. So the way we do that is make sure we destroy the entity. And we can't directly destroy the entity because we're in an, in, uh, an enumerator, right? We're iterating over a collection. So we can't destroy it immediately. We have to put it into the command buffer so that when on update is finished, post update commands, it will run through this buffer and this buffer will create whatever rockets need to be created. It will set their current position and then it will destroy all of these fire request uh, messages. And that's it. That's our fire rocket system. Again, these systems are very, very simple, right? We've, we have three systems in place now. Uh, if you notice here, we're not actually incrementing the accumulator. We're just checking, is the accumulator, uh, has the accumulator been reached? Has, have we reached our fire rate? So are we able to fire? And if we're not able to fire, if we're not able to fire, we don't fire, and we still destroy this message. So this is a request to fire, but if we're not able to fire, we don't fire, and we destroy the request. You're going to have to try again later. Hopefully you can fire then. Uh, but we're not incrementing this accumulator. We're not accumulating time to get to fire rate. We need to implement a new system for that. 
Now again, you can you can combine systems here. I could I could have uh, accumulated ammo data here, uh, but that means we would only be accumulating ammo data. We'd only be adding time to the fire rate if a fire request was uh, created, because this only runs this only runs if there are fire requests. If there is no request to fire, we should still be accumulating our rate of fire so that the it's available to fire as soon as you hit the key if you waited enough time, as soon as the request comes in. Uh, so that's why we don't do the accumulation here. We have to go, we have to go create our own system to accumulate our fire rate. So this is a fire accumulation system. Let's create this as a component system and implement what we're missing, which is that on update, very simple. I wanna make sure that this runs as an update after to the apply input system. Because remember, uh, after inputs are applied, we might have a request to fire. We, we wanna make sure we're accumulating things uh, after inputs have been applied. We kind of want to make sure that apply input system is one of the first systems that run and a lot of things run after it. I know I'm going to need delta time here. So I'm just going to grab it now. Float delta time is this dot time dot delta time. We know we're going to need that. And now I want to loop through all entities. Mm, nope. For each. Now here, I don't actually care about the entity. Uh, you, you don't have to grab the entity. You know, I've done this a few times here, right? When we're doing these lambdas in this for each, it's optional. You don't need it if you don't need it. So instead, what I want to do is I want to loop through every entity that has ammo data. This is still going to be uh, uh, an entity for each. We're still looping through every entity that has an ammo data component. Uh, but I just don't need access to the entity because all we're going to do is modify ammo data. I don't need I don't need the entity itself. And if you don't need it, don't grab it. It'll optimize. It'd be a little bit more optimized than the data that's passing around. And this is our accumulator. So you just want to say is if ammo dot accumulator is less than our fire rate. If it's less than our fire rate, just accumulate plus equal to delta time, right? So every frame, just keep adding adding game time, adding how much time has passed in the game to our accumulator, uh, as long as we're not at our fire rate. If we hit our fire rate, stop accumulating time and wait until we fire. So once we do fire, right, once the fire rocket system will subtract fire rate off of our accumulator, which means this system will then immediately kick in and uh, start running again. And because this accumulator system runs and we have a fire rocket system that's using it, let's also make sure updates after type of fire accumulator system. Let's make sure that the accumulator system runs first before we try and use these fire requests. Otherwise, we have to wait a whole nother frame, which, you know, could be 16 milliseconds. It, it could alter uh, uh, frame mechanics uh, that what you're doing. Let's make sure that we're accumulating our ammo data, our fire rate first, and then we will see if we can fire through these requests. Uh, should we go see if this works? Let's go see if we fire a rocket. And we still have some, we have to go add a couple pieces of data. We need to go add ammo data to our player, right? So here's our player. We can now add ammo data. And ammo data needs a prefab. And if you remember, the cool thing about this, this is one of the really cool things I like about the Unity editor in this conversion system. The ammo data is an entity here. It's not a game object. This is not a game object. This is not a, pre, a, a game object prefab, right? This is just an entity. And then we have some, you know, fire rates and some uh, accumulators. Uh, so if we look at uh, what that's supposed to be in the editor, it actually lets us pick a game object. And this game object can be an asset. It can be something from the scene. Whatever would normally work from a prefab perspective, it can. Uh, what will happen here is this will get converted as well. If this was not an entity already, the game object would run through the same convert process. This convert to entity uh, is smart enough that conversion system will say, oh, this is a game object. 
Let me go make sure that game object gets converted to an entity and then assign that to the, the field instead of a, an object or a game object. Since we have a player missile, we can actually just drag it here and use it just like you would a prefab, just like you're creating a, a prefab uh, in a game object and you can assign it to a property in uh, the inspector. You can do the same thing with entities. You can make this, it makes it real easy to kind of build these games up this way. And if you remember, a player missile is already a convert to entity. It's already going to convert. It's already going to be an entity. So that makes it easy for us to just drag it in. We'll get the entity for a player missile as a prefab, and then we can start instantiating it. So what's our fire rate? Our fire rate's going to be, let's say, half a second. Every half a second, we can fire a missile. Uh, I am also going to uh, preset the accumulator to also be the same as our fire rate. What that just means is as soon as the game starts, I can instantly fire. I don't have to wait half a second before we accumulate. You don't have to do this. It's fine. You can also set here. It's up to you. And then you could also build a system, of course, that uh, from an authoring standpoint, from a convert standpoint, can synchronize it. So if we look at player, player now has ammo data. And you can see that we had this fire in this accumulator. Uh, I, didn't, I set it to zero, but the system ran, and it ran a few times. And we can find our systems here. Here's our fire accumulator system. There's only one object that has ammo data, which is our player. And it accumulated until we hit our fire rate. And now it's waiting, right? It's waiting for us to get some fire rocket requests. And right now there are no fire requests because I have not hit the space bar. And then here we go. Let's hit the space bar. Let's get a fire request out there, which will spawn our rocket. And uh, then, you know, we reaccumulate. And it just happens so fast because it's set to something really low like half a second. Now, if we look at entities, we're going to have a player missile out here. There is a player missile entity and it has missile data. It has uh, speed data. Uh, it has, you know, all of the data we care about. Uh, it has our missile data on uh, where it belongs to. But it had, we have no movement system. We have no mo uh, missile movement system going on right now. So right now it spawns, and it's here. And if we move our player, obviously, but the missile doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. We've spawned it, and it's, it's uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so why don't we go and add a missile mover system? Let's go add a new system. So let's here, new class, missile move system. Not component data, sorry. A component system. And we get our on update again. So what is a missile move system going to do? Well, again, this dot entities dot for each. We're going to grab our entity, our missile. Let's get it. Uh, we need reference to our missile data. Reference to our missile data. We need a reference to speed data, right? A missile has missile data, has speed, and it has position, which is translation. And that's all the data we need. So we're building a query, right? This is a system that's going to go look for objects, aka entities that have components. It's going to go look for objects that have missile data, that have speed data, and that have a positional data. Any entity that has all three of those is something we want to process through. So that's the object that this system cares about. And uh, this is a just a missile mover system. It's, it's not a complex system. Uh, normally what we would do here, let's say let's take a float three, let's grab our new positions, calculate what our new position is, which is our position dot value times our speed dot value times, and we need a delta time, right? Because uh, we want to have a smooth, uh, smooth movement. So float dt is equal to this dot time dot delta time. So this is our new position, and then we can associate that position dot value is equal to new position. And we could be done. We can be done. Let's go do that right now. So now if I fire a missile, 
uh, a missile should start moving. As long as we set all of our data correctly. So if I fire a missile, I'm going to hit stop here. And just, uh, I hit pause real quick after we fired our missile. So we have our player missile. We have missile data. Uh, we have team, we have offset, we have speed value, which right here, right, has a speed of 15 on us on the Y. And uh, we have our transformation. So as we step through, I'm just going to step through, I'm using the step. You'll see that uh, something weird's happening. So why is our speed not being applied to our translation? Uh, the problem, of course, is that I did a multiply there, and that's not what you want to do. You want to take your position value. You want to add to the current position speed times time. And now if we run that again and we fire a missile and I stop, let's see if this, uh, oops, sorry, did I not do that correctly? We have our position value plus our speed times delta time. And we are setting our translation value back correct yes on missile data on speed data um do we have a little bug here let's find out there we go sorry so if we look at our player missile now uh we'll look at our new missile down here here's our translation data as we step through here it's just going to constantly move up the problem we have though, is this runs forever. We fired two missiles and you can see that here's its position, 100, 150 coming up there. Here's our other missile that's gonna catch up to it, right? They are both moving and uh, they will never stop moving. They're always gonna be uh, being applied. If we look at our missile mover system, we have one query that returns two uh, missiles, right? Here's our two missiles, here are two objects and they happen forever. Well, that's because we're, we have a world bounds. Remember, we have this game world bounds. Why don't we uh, add a check in our missile mover system? And if our rocket gets out of bounds, we can just destroy it. Because if it goes off screen, it's not usable for us anymore. Uh, so uh, why we don't need it anymore. So let's get rid of it. So the way that we can do that in here is before we get into our for each, let's go get a reference to that game world data, right? Game world data, game data. This dot entity, well, we can say this dot get singleton of game world data. So this is, uh, we've done this before. Let's go get a uh, copy of that game world data off our singleton that we know about. And then we can do some bounds checking. So if the new position dot y is greater than or equal to our game world sorry game data dot w remember w is our top z is our bottom or or if uh, let's do this our bounds dot w or if our new position dot y is less than or equal to game data bounds z if our rocket goes outside of our Y axes, whether from the top or the bottom, because keep in mind, aliens are going to be able to fire missiles as well. And this is not firing a player missile. This is just missile data. So any missile with speed and, and position is going to run through the system, which is good. That means we don't need separate systems for an alien missile and a player missile. This is all missiles. So we need to check on uh, both sides because we can fire rockets in both directions, uh, ultimately. If we are out of bounds, all we want to say is post update commands, destroy our entity. And remember, I can't destroy it immediately. It's got to go into our update buffer. It's got to go into the update buffer because we're inside of the for each. After this update runs, the entity will get destroyed. Uh, and then, you know, let's just return. We could continue to set the position even though we're going to destroy it. It would not harm anything, uh, but we don't need to update the position if it's going to. So let's just break out early and be done. So now if we go back and we hit play, we can see that from our all entities, if we hit here, it's pause, we have a player missile. And as we go here, as soon as we get to the top, one more frame, one more frame, and now we're out of a uh, 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 frame and it's gone, right? 
As soon as we get past the game world, it will destroy itself. Boop, player missile goes away, player missile goes away. So there we go. And the same thing will happen if we fire down uh, and it goes below the game world, it will also get destroyed. 